Hi, I'm Darcy with Goliath Tech Utah. Today, we installed helical piles for a foundation using the helical piles as the frost protection without having to excavate below the frost line. Let's rewind and see how that happened. New home foundation. 14 piles, already got all of our corners staked. Yep. We just have to get it laid out. Let's get to work. What we have here is we had a lot that a previous house was built on, nestled between two little houses in downtown Ogden, Utah. The house that was previously here was demoed, and so it was a flat lot. During the demo process, it was not excavated and done correctly so you could build immediately on it. Some of the concrete was left down there, another debris, and then the dirt was just put over the top. So we have about four to five feet under the existing grade that just had random items in it and that was definitely not suitable to build on. The developer that purchased the lot has been working with Goliath Tech for about three years and knows the capacity and knows the benefits of using helical piles. In a lot like this, we are nestled really close to the fences and to be able to excavate all of the ground out of here that needs to be taken out and then compacting what needs to be compacted and then the footings and all of that would be very time intensive and very invasive to this nice community that's very close and tight quarters. So our detail shows the edge of the grade beam right here and then we're six inches in with where our piles are going to go. What we want to do is we're going to set our string line in line with this edge right here and then we're going to set a paint line on the six inch mark. But If we set our string right here on the end, as long as we don't hit that string, we know we're going to be within the grade beam where we need to be with where the engineers called it out. So the string, setting that up right at the first and keeping it up the whole time will help us make sure that we're always within the grade beam. After I have my guidelines marked out, then I wanna set another string up that's going to be our install lines. Now this isn't going to stay there the whole time, but this is going to put, be there so we can paint that line so we know what, what line our piles need to be. One of the other benefits of having that paint line is that when we set the laser, we can really fine tune it close and then move further back. The question we get often is, what happens when you hit a rock? Well, it really depends on where that rock is situated. If the rock is situated directly underneath the pile, then the pile will spin on it. And at that point, we have a couple options. We can retract the pile, excavate the rock out, or if we have a load distribution on the line, we can adjust where that's placed and then recalculate what that load needs to be. If the rock is at a higher surface and it's not directly below, then the helix will typically push that rock out of the way as long as it's at a reasonable size. If it's underground, it'll still push it out of the way and the ground will just roll. You can see there wasn't a massive disturbance there. It just pushes the rock out of the way and then continues to move down. This is a really high benefit for a couple reasons. Number one, especially at a foundation, you want the least soil disturbance as possible. This shows that a helical pile does minimal disturbance even when there's rocks. The elevation here isn't exactly perfect. So what we're doing is making the accommodations and making those minor adjustments to make it so the foundation can be perfect. We got this pile actually hit such a high torque that it wasn't able to go any further down to the ground because it's the pressure is maxed out. So it'll hold the maximum amount of weight that this pile can hold, but it's too high for where they're gonna pour their concrete. So I'm just gonna take a bandsaw Cut the pile level, drill a couple holes in here, and then we can put the head right on top of that.
So what, what I'm doing is I'm following them as they're installing the piles and I'm staging the rebar heads at the locations and then installing them as I go. So what it looks like is basically me walking over here, putting the rebar head on top of the pile and I'm going to put a bolt going through it so it has uplift and down steadiness. Basically I'm going to throw the bolt through, I'm going to put the nuts on, tighten it up, and that's all that I have to do to get these rebar heads on. And this is the final step. So when we leave here today, all it's going to be is these piles with the rebar heads all the way around the foundation. So when the concrete guys come in, they can tie onto the rebar and they're ready to go. So what we want to do now is just make sure that none of the rebar after the heads are on or outside that line either. One of the things that really frustrates contractors is if, ever, if they even have to go over just a little bit, that increases the cost of everything. So we want to make sure as we go around that we can cut off any of that little section that might be a little bit too close. We want to be at least an inch away from our guidelines and cut off anything that's within that inch. Kyler, go ahead. As you can see here, we're not outside of the guideline, but we're pretty close. And instead of leaving it and making their jobs harder, we're just gonna cut it off, make their jobs a little bit easier so they like using us more often. That little bit will give them about two inches of more room to work with. Now I'm gonna go through the rest of the house, making sure nothing's sticking out or really close to the edge. And I'll just cut off all the little pieces that are hanging out all over. So even though it's just a little piece like this, it might not be a big deal to me, but to a contractor, just that one inch piece of hanging out rebar, will really annoy them and make their job a little bit more difficult. My name's Rhett and this is my partner Kurt. We uh, own a company, Triple Crown Homes. We have the opportunity to start using Goliath Tech, Darcy and Ryan Mock. A approximately two years ago, we were able to bring all sides together, agree on some engineering numbers, and thus started the partnership between my company and her company and putting this new technique into more than just deck piles or pier piles. It was how to structure an entire house off of the process that she uses. We have, we've had great success. There are some real logistics reasons that we like to do it. There's some cost savings reasons that we like to do it. And on projects like this one, where we're working in such a small envelope, whether the soil required it or not, we would have used this technique now that we've been doing it for two and a half years because of what it saves us. If we were to try a typical building style here on this particular really small lot, we would have had to excavate everything out, haul it all away, complete the interior footings and foundation, and then bring all that material back in. With this, we were able to grub the lot, set some gravel and start putting piers. After they leave, when the piers are done and we get through our underground plumbing, have our steel tied, we order concrete once. There's not concrete for footings and then wait for the footings to dry sufficiently to put a foundation wall on top of, wait for them to get the foundation backfill. Wait for the foundation to dry the backfill. it. Yeah, then you have to wait for backfill. With this process, we're formed up before plumbing. As soon as we get underground plumbing and steel inspected, we pour one time. We're literally able to frame in a day or two instead of dig the hole, wait for footings, wait for foundation, wait for backfill, wait for underground plumbing, pour the flat work. wait for the flat work. We do it, it's done, the framer can move in. So it's a significant time savings in the, on the right project. It's been a wonderful experience. They're very accommodating. They don't have that typical subcontractor mentality where they'll get to you when they get to you. They show up when they say they're gonna show up. They're always ready to go and they do excellent work. We haven't had a single quality issue. It's been an amazing experience over the last two, two and a half years to get to know and to work with them. I highly recommend them. The contractor 
engineered the house to be built on helical piles with a slab on grade approach. With that approach, we're able to put the piles in with a very simple scrape of the existing grade. And then we can install our piles. He can shoot in the gravel, form around the outside and backfill about 12 inches. Goliath Tech works with home builders, individual people building homes, as well as developers. We can work with developers to be able to have a consistent application and engineering throughout their whole process to be able to keep that nice and easy and efficient. The whole subdivision here at White Rocks is all built on piles. They're all slab on grade homes and we have put them all in piles on a grade beam throughout each. You'll be able to see houses in different stages. Some of them are at the initial excavation stage. Some of them have the concrete poured. Some of them are done framing. One thing that's going to stay consistent is all of those foundations will be anchored beneath the frost and solid. So one of the major benefits with using helical piles on a slab on grade is frost protection. You can tell with this foundation that we haven't excavated down three feet to get below the frost line. The reason we haven't excavated down to three feet is because the helix on the helical pile, that helix is the frost protection. Helical piles have a tension or an uplift, which means not only are they excellent for compression or the load that's being put on them, but they also have a tension capacity, which means the tension is how much it would take to pull it out of the ground. That comes into play in a situation like this where we haven't excavated around the foundation below frost. We don't need to. The helical piles are installed below the frost line to accommodate for that frost protection. We're installed at seven feet deep. Frost is only 30 inches. So with, with these at five to seven feet deep, we're able to get down there, anchor in below the frost, and then they can't pull out. Now, the soil, when it freezes, the soil will expand slightly within that frost layer. When it expands, that soil needs somewhere to go. The engineer has actually engineered for this exact situation. You can see in the detail, there's a layer of three inches of polyfoam. This is considered a void form. A void form is a layer that doesn't really have a structural capacity. The process is that we come in after it's excavated, we put the piles in, and then the concrete company comes in and forms, puts the polyfoam in, rebar, and pours. They'll be able to pour the grade beams and the slab at the same time, saving time and money so the concrete company doesn't have to come out multiple times. You don't have nearly as much concrete because our piles are anchored under the frost line, so the concrete doesn't have to be anchored below the frost line. So with the helical piles installed in this manner and the rebar that's tied together, the void form underneath, it actually creates a suspended slab above the soil. That void form gives the soil a place to move if it does freeze and thaw and move at all. This creates a very sustainable structure that you don't have to excavate that additional 30 inches. We have the helical pile below the frost. We have the void form to be able to accommodate any moving soil. And then the helical piles are anchored within the footing to be able to have rebar below and rebar above so they can span from pile to pile. And that's how it works. This is Darcy with Goliath Tech Utah. Kyler. Roll. We're able to get the helical piles in for a foundation in one day without having to excavate, take all the dirt out, and then form everything up in a second pour. We're able to do that in one day and still get home before rush hour. Thanks for watching. If you're building on fill, collapsible soil, or expansive soil, give Goliath Tech a call. We'll take all of the pain out of it. If you're just interested in watching something really cool, subscribe to our channel. It's pretty fun to watch.